everybody. I've got a wonderful documentary series on in the background as I frequently do as the weather starts to get cooler here in the northern hemisphere. And of course because I can never do just one thing at a time, I'm also doing some work on family search and I wanted you to see the issue of possible duplicates. When I'm talking about duplicates on family search, I'm talking about the fact that the family search setting is of a one world tree and that means that there should be one and only one of every person who the tree, whom the tree accounts for or who lived on the planet uh, represented with one single representation electronically in family search. You see what I'm saying? So ancestry, I have my tree, I've got my ancestors in there, I'm working it, I'm doing my thing. A cousin of mine has a tree, she's working it, she's doing her thing. They're two separate trees, they're two separate sets of research, and they can coexist on Ancestry because it's defined, each tree is defined by being within an account, my account, her account. But Family Search is the one big world account, which means it's crowdsourced, just like Find a Grave or Wikitree or Jenny. And because of that, people do things. So one of the things, <laughs> and when I say do things, I mean not good things. So one of the things that was done back in 2012, which is no longer allowed on Family Search, is called extraction. And apparently what they had folks do, and I've, I've only ever really guessed at this because I've seen the evidence. The evidence is that in 2012, a bunch of people with uh, weird handles like unknown one two three four five six seven and stuff like that, um, not actual human being names, came into Family Search and examined individual records that were available to them, specifically vital records, birth records and death records, so also some baptismal records, and from those. They extracted out the names and created people, you know, and so they would look at a record and make, in this case, Susan Wilson is the, listed as the mom and her husband, Amos M. Truax, is listed as the dad and there's a kid. And so they would look at the record, create the person Susan by adding that record to a new person that they've created from it. You know, so they're creating the person with the data from the record and no other data. So if there's no birthplace or birth date data there, then they're just creating an, a person with that name and with the relationship of spouse to Amos M. Truax and then with the relationship of mother to the child that's in the birth record. Well, the problem with that is in this particular case, one, two, three, four, five, six versions of Amos Truax exist and six versions of Susan existed. Some were just Susan, some were Susan Truax. I made one initially that was Mrs. Susan Truax and then as I started to work through here I found oh my goodness okay there's a lot of merging. So I've merged all of Susan and her versions of herself and I want to show you what I've got for her is these are her details. So. The records that existed from which she was created, for which there are actual credits, are the 1880 census and the 1910 census. Otherwise, you can see there are all these different spouses that are all the same guy, just different versions of him, and I'm going to have to merge them all together. But you can see what you've got. There's a bunch of kids under here, under the first version of him. And under the second, second version of him, there's that one. And then 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 there's that one. And look, a bunch of them are Lucy Truax because apparently Lucy's birth record uh, existed in multiple forms and was ultimately um, used to create multiple versions just of her, let alone of her parents. So what I'm doing is I'm going to do a merging of the possible duplicates. Now, normally what I would do is I would go to the first Amos, I'd make him up here, 
and I would uh, then copy his, I just tapped on his uh, ID number. His FSID number is an exclusive alphanumeric number, it's hyphenated, and it, it's the exclusive identifier for his profile. So this version of him has this profile number, which I'm sorry, I'm, I'm reading through my trifocals, 9SFF-R3Y. So then what I would do is I would back arrow to the list of all of the other versions of him, and I would tap on the next one, and I would go to possible duplicates. But what I'm doing instead, because I'm pretty sure they're all gonna fit together nicely, and they're all attached to the same wife. Now we've only got one version of her. What I'm doing is I'm just gonna go to the first one, and I'm gonna go to possible duplicates and see if anybody else shows up, and I am convinced that they will. Because what Family Search is looking at is a person with this name, with a relationship to the same woman, and with relationship to the child that they share. And so Family Search is going to look at the totality of the evidence, the identifying uh, characteristics of this person, and the identifying characteristics of other possible versions of this person, and is going to say, okay, I see the following guys who might be the same guy, and you need to merge them. So here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to tap on Amos M. Truax, 9SFF-R3Y, okay? Now I've tapped on him. Now I'm going up to the hamburger menu, which is the three dots, not the three dashes, but it's more like a, it's not so much of a hamburger, it's thinner than a hamburger. Um, but anyway, the three dots in the upper right, I'm going to tap on that. Now I'm going to tap on possible duplicates. And bam, look at all these versions of him. And how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So all of them are accounted for. So I'm working through them one by one. Now, if you run into this, you can do this. You have to do it slowly and carefully and be sure that everything corresponds, but it's important. There cannot be duplicate versions of a person. You don't delete the duplicates, you merge them. That way, all of the data is accounted for. Never, never, never delete people from Family Search. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to tap on the first review merge button for Amos Truax, and this profile number is 9SF6-L2R. So I'm tapping on that, and now it says, hey, hey, be careful. All right, well, I'm good. I'm happy. So we're going to continue this merge. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the best version of Amos on the right hand side where it says saved person and then the left hand side that's red that person's going to be deleted but not really deleted so much as merged. There's going to be a trail of breadcrumbs and I'll show you that we, we get to that as we get through the process. But what I see here, and this is where we think about what is the best evidence, Amos M. Truax is better than Amos Truax, and no birth date is not as good as having a birth date, same with birthplace, and uh, there's the residence also that's over on the, uh, the green side, the right-hand side, and so we wanna keep them in this order. We wanna go ahead and merge them with the person on the left having deficient evidence being the person that gets merged into the person on the right who has superior evidence. So we're going to go slide to the bottom of this screen and say yes to continue because it's asking me, are this, is this the same person? And by the way, you can see the evidence they're created from. You see here on the left, it says Amos Truax in entry for Lucy E. Truax, Ohio births and christenings. That's exactly where it came from. Somebody came in in 2012, did the work, and it pulled all of these names and relationships out in an extraction. And so that's why there's only one piece of data there, one piece of evidence there for this person's existence. So we're going to fix this one person at a time. We're going to merge all seven versions of these. So what are we going to do? Say yes to this. They are the same person tap on yes continue now if there were better information on the left 
we would move it over into the right hand column, but there really isn't. And I'm going slowly. And this is important. On the right hand side, there is an actual marriage date. It's clumsily entered and it needs to be fixed, but in terms of the format and the way that it looks, but it's still the same person. You can look at it, the spouse, 9SFF-RQQ. It's her on both sides, but you want to keep the marriage information. You don't want to do away with that. So we're not going to hit replace to pass her over from the left to the right. And the same thing with Lucy Truax, sort of. That is that it's the same person. So, and you can, how do you know it's the same version of Lucy E. Truax? Well, look at the FSID. It's 9SF6-L2X on both columns. So we don't need to hit replace to move her over. It doesn't matter. She's already there in relationship to his wife. So we're going to move down the rest. This is being carried over automatically. It carries over the citation to the birth and christening record for Ohio. So we're, we want that in the saved person column because it's more evidence of this particular relationship between him and his daughter, but also between him and his wife. So we've got everything looked at. Yes, that looks great. We're going to go continue. Now, this is the trail of breadcrumbs. There are four different kinds of statements that they have already written out for you. And I love this. This is very helpful. It says either everything is identical. That's the first one in the upper left hand corner. Below that one is most information and relationships match, but no details conflict. Well, that's not true. And neither is the all information true because the version on the left that we're merging in didn't have any birth information for Amos Truax and it didn't have his middle initial. So they're not identical. Um, then going around counterclockwise on the bottom right, it says this record contains little information. There is enough evidence to believe it is the same person or above that, there's most vital information and relationships match. Some details contain minor conflicts. Well, I kind of have a shootout here because there wasn't a whole lot of information, but there was the information of his relationship to his wife and his relationship to his daughter. So I'm going to default with saying that the vital information and relationships, most of it does match and there were minor conflicts and that there was information missing. So all I have to do is tap that square. Bam! It pops the information into this field, Reason for Merge. And this field, Reason for Merge, is going to have my name attached to it as a hot link. If anybody wants to fight me on this later, they can message me and say, hey, you were wrong about this and this is why. But what this does is it provides a reason for other researchers to understand why did she do this merger? Oh, okay, there's some conflicts and I could say I could actually type in some information missing or something like that. I'm not going to. But anyway, the standard reason for this, okay, it's here. It even provides the two different FSIDs for the two versions of Amos. All we have to do now is tap merge in the upper right hand corner and that merge is done. Now, boop, we've got another list. So I'm going to do it again. I'm not going to explain it again. I'm going to do it slowly and I want you to think and say to yourself what it is that I'm doing. Review merge. Now in this case, I'm going to go with the same option.
and we're ready to go to the next one. Ready for another one? Here we go. Now this has better information. It does have 1837 and it does have Ohio. It isn't fully spelled out as the United States. He doesn't have a middle initial, but it's better than it was. And it comes from the 1860 census. This is good. It's an actual you know, record that involves the rest of the family, and that's great. And you can see that there are multiple people there. That's good. Three records, by the way, three different sources that are here in this person. And they're going to get added over to the two that are already there on the right-hand side. So now let's look at carrying data. Which is better, 1837 in Ohio or 1837 in Ohio, comma, United States? United States. Carries over the 1860 census. Carries over daughter Mary. Now there are duplicates of his kids, so I'm going to have to merge those two, but don't worry, I won't take you along for that ride. This is just to get us through all of the versions of Amos Truax. And again, most of it is there, matches, and is good, so I'm happy. We're leaving breadcrumbs as we go. Anybody can take a look at this, follow the logic, and understand the overall picture of what this looked like. A new child is being added over. It is a duplicate of a child that's already there. As you can see, there's the duplicate version. No first name, just Truex. And it came from a birth and christening record. Again, yet another extraction. Okay, I'm going to move a little faster. There's Rosa. You can see he had a daughter, Rosa, so it's the same guy. And there is Rosa. You always wait for the jump so that the black the the black section there's there's like a little jump in the picture you always wait until it's there okay now let's take a look at this now this adds his parents and his siblings isn't that nice okay so Now, here is some new information. Preble, Ohio. I can reformat it. I don't want to have to remember or go back in to change the, and add the town or the county. So I am going to add that over, even though it looks like kind of crappy. I'm going to fix that formatting later. Here's mom and dad and their marriage. And we're going to say most vitals are the same. Wait till they're jump. Okay, now I'm just going to match this up. 
We're going through the last one. I have more versions of his wife to merge because a couple came through here. Now again, weigh out what's best. We're going to merge some of these kids later. Now, in order to clean him up, I want a back arrow, go to his details, go here. There is no punctuation in genealogy, so I took the period out. And see how that 1837 is bumped in and there's no space between the comma and Ohio? We're going to fix that. I just tap on it. This is on my phone, of course. You can see the reason for the merge. There it is. It's all there and the date and my name. All I have to do is hit edit. And all I have to do, it's the simplest thing to do this on your phone with the phone app. I tap date of birth and automatically it gives me the little calendar icon with 1837 below it. When I tap on that, it says that, wait, it says that it's the, it provides the standardized version of the date. And the same thing happened here. It happened too quickly, but here's how I can show it to you. It was like this. Well, okay, so all I had to do was tap on the, the place of birth field as well, and automatically, bam, these options popped up. And it is Preble County, Ohio. So I tap on that, and bam, there it is. I save it, he's good to go. And now the little blue circle up near his head, near that little fake picture of his head, that means there are more documents to attach to him, so I will. So I can see that what we've got here is we've got three versions of his spouse, we've got multiple versions of some of his kids, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take care of those off camera. I wanted you to see this because this is how much of a hot mess family search is because people are careless, because the trickle-down effect of 2012 and the great extraction disaster is still being felt because apparently nobody's working on this family right now. And so uh, this actually isn't my family. It's sort of a tangent to my family. And I just got in here and started fixing stuff. So you know, if you have work done in your family and you think all your work is done, you're wrong because there's plenty yet to do in family search to clean up messes. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't. There are other things that you can do. I will do more videos about those things. But I really wanted you to see this now so that you would have something to do. Thanks very much and have a good day, afternoon, evening, whatever.